on the top, please, sir. Ms. Koshik, what attracts you to the civil service? So I, so I grew up uh, in Dehradun, and so I had uh, access to education, healthcare, and all basic amenities. But sir, so I realized that not everyone has access to these facilities in life, and I also slowly realized the import importance of it. So, so I want to um, help improve the quality of service in India and the quality of life of people. And so, uh, hence, I thought this would provide me with a good platform to do the same. Good. Quality of life is a great thing. Now, have you read in the paper yesterday, it came probably today also, that in HDI index, the HDI index, we have fallen? Yes, sir. What is our uh, ranking? So, we fell from 130th to 131st uh, rank this year. Out of? Out of one, uh, so, if I'm not wrong, 187 countries. Okay. Now, what are the parameters on which they measure the HDI index? Uh, so, the three broad categories are standard of living, which measures the relative income of the country. It's a secondly education, which takes into account expected years of schooling. And what is the standard of living? Yes, sir. What else? And so, the education parameter takes into account uh, expected Ex access to edu education. education knowledge. Yeah? Yes, sir. What else? And so, health. Health and uh, we use healthy life, healthy yes. life. And third is quality of life. They talk of quality of life. Yes. So, what is the state of uh, children below five years in our country? How many do uh, you think children will be there approximately in India under this in this category? So, so I'm not. Uh, I'm not aware okay. of the number. Okay, uh, okay. I'll help you. About 2.4 crores. 2.4 crores, yes, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. Uh, what is uh, there was a National Family Health Survey report yes, which came out last week or 10 days ago. Yes, it is done by the government every year. So, uh, government had carried out this survey covering 6 lakh households, 6 lakh, for the year 2015 and 16. Any idea what it says about kids below five? Yes, so, uh, so with if you know it, then only we we'll talk. Yes, sir. So the under five mortality rate is uh, high, and so the infant mortality rate, uh, as I remember, it to be forty-two. So that is also high, and so apart from the mortality rate, it talks of nutrition. Okay, well, 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 what, what, what is the figure you give? So forty-two uh, infant mortality rate. Okay. Okay, alright. Go ahead. And sir, so the under 5 mortality rates, I am not able to recall the exact figure, so I think it was around uh, 157. And but so it said something more, much more than that. Yes, sir. So the Apart from mortality, we are slowly improving yes. this rate. IMR and MMR, yes, improving. You know what is MMR and IMR? Yes, sir. Infant mortality and better. No, but it said something about the health of those below five. Yes, it's a talk. Uh, it spoke of the nutritional status, and so how the child wasting and stunting uh, is a major problem in How many? How many those were below? What percentage are enemy? Any idea? No. Sorry, sir. You need to read it. It's a five time report. Yes, sir. I hope not. Okay. Now, economics is a subject. Mr. Jetty, while presenting the budget, stated that my main focus is on agriculture, agriculture and rural development, infrastructure development, poverty alleviation, and fiscal deficit. As an economics student, tell me whether Mr. Jetty has kept his promise in the budget. So, uh, so I would uh, start with fiscal deficit and so and from that perspective we have a 3.5% deficit presently so we aim for 3.2% so even though it, FRBM says that we should get it to 3 uh, but sir uh, 
keeping in mind the uh, scenario in the country of 3.2 is a very uh, balanced target to have. So in that respect, if we stick to our fiscal deficit target as we have in the previous year, um, it would be keeping the promise. Fiscal consolidation, right. What about the other three areas? So secondly, so uh, if we go to infrastructure, so the budgetary allocation was uh, so, um, around 3.9 lakh crore. Very good, 3.95. Excellent, excellent. And so, it's a huge allocation. Yes, so Very unprecedented. Good. I got your answer. This is a, in fact, of all the sectors, infrastructure gets the maximum. Yes. Now let's move quickly to the other agriculture. So, uh, so agriculture, we aim to double the farmer income by 20. That was a pipe dream. So let's yes. come straight to the point. Yes, How much allocation? I do, do not remember the exact allocation, but so uh, some few figures were that uh, 40,000 no, like crores. Poverty alleviation programs, what are those specifically they have been given in the budget? So, poverty alleviation from. So, the national. They provide a safety, safety net for the poor, landless, not uh, just landless, homeless. Now you come to. So, uh, the National Rural Employment Guarantee. Very good, very good. How much? Uh, so, I do not remember the figure. 48,000 so crore. 48,000. Umbrella. Very good. Okay. One is this. Another, there are four programs I identify. There are several, but major are four. So, yeah. housing for all. Excellent uh, housing. How much? Uh, so, uh, more than 29,000 What else? Very good. Go ahead. You are doing well. So, poverty and patients are... Have you heard of Ujjala? yes. Is it for the poor or for the rich? So, for the poor. How so much allocation? So, the allocation. More, 2,000 crores. And lastly, you have forgotten the most important, food subsidy. Food subsidy. How much? So, previous allocation. Um, One like 45,000 crores. What are these facts? Yes. Then your answer will be impressive. Yes. Mentioned Ujala scheme. Yes. What is it? So uh, Ujala is a LPG scheme. That is. What is? Is it acronym of something or uh, just Ujala means light? So it is that. So it is an acronym. So. Oh. Uh, so I'm not able to recall the exact. Uh, so let's say it gives LPG benefit to poor households in the name LPG. of the. Ujala. I'm talking Ujala. Which word, sir? I'm so sorry, sir. That was which word. I'm sorry, sir. So, uh, so Jala scheme, as far as I can remember, was for uh, LED, uh, yes, LED program, and so providing subsidized uh, LEDs to households. And yes, sir. So, what is the target? How much has been achieved? When was it launched? Uh, so, it was launched last year. Uh, so, I'm not. So what, what is the target to provide how many LEDs? I'm sorry, sir. Okay, I'm sure. What do you mean by women empowerment? Uh, so women empowerment implies uh, equal opportunities for women. And so that is from an external perspective. And so from the woman's perspective, it's giving each woman a faith and belief in her own capability to achieve her ambitions. Uh, so, so internally, it has we have to empower them mentally, emotionally, financially. And so externally, we have to create an environment where they can grow without any bias. So what has been done in this regard in recent times? So with respect to women empowerment, uh, so, uh, to begin with, even though the focus of the Narega uh, plan was not on women, 51% utilization is uh, by women. So, so, in that sense, it gives them uh, an employment opportunity. And so, apart from that, uh, so the new Housing for All mission aims to give uh, the house in the name of the woman, which would give her a greater decision making power. Yes. What and, else? And so, uh, Any legislation to inform women? So, Maternity Benefit uh, Act was passed recently. So, 
So it uh, it increases the uh, maternity leave from 12 weeks to 26. How does it empower women to increase the uh, maternity leave limit to 26 weeks? How does it empower? Is there anything else which really empowers women under this act? It's only a facility you are giving that instead of 12 weeks, yes. you can have uh, 26 weeks. And so, organized sector has to uh, provide crash at the workplace for women. Mm -hmm. So, in this legislation, that will also help. Any other legislation? So, in recent times? Yes, last one or two or three years. So can I just take a few seconds to record? The amendments have been made in some laws? Uh, yes sir, the, after the December 2015 case, sir, the amendment was made to uh, uh, so the sexual uh, act, uh, sorry, the sexual harassment and sexual uh, so I'm not aware of the exact name of the act, but so the uh, juvenile Justice Act was uh, changed and uh, rape accused. Any amendments in IPC, Indian Penal Court? You are from Uttarakhand, yes, but you have not given Uttarakhand as your first preference. Why is that so? Uh, Ma'am, I am very attached to the state and I would keep going back to definitely. Yes. Ma'am, uh, I thought that since I have seen Uttarakhand and I have seen a new place, yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, there were the flash floods last year. Yes, ma'am. So, what happened? Have we come back to the normal situation or are things still very bad? Uh, ma'am, the flash floods are a seasonal pre monsoon feature. Ma'am, at that point of time, there was a cloud burst, and especially the area in Rudraprayag, uh, the river level stays. Uh, to a very high level. And now uh, the immediate impact was that there was a landslide and roots was, yes. the road was uh, broken. So ma'am, the building of roads has taken place. However ma'am, uh, we are still prone to that again this year. So in that sense, the administration is working. And so do we have a disaster management agency in the country? Uh, yes ma'am, we have the national disaster management. So what sort of disasters do they do that? Uh, ma'am, the LDMA looks at uh, natural as well as man-made disasters. And natural disasters, floods, uh, earthquakes, recently droughts were also uh, made a part of natural disasters. And man-made? Uh, ma'am, chemical, uh, chemical, biological leakages, uh, nuclear disasters, uh, and then... So how many, uh, how many of these... Uh Task force members are they in Uttarakhand? Do we have a response team or do they come from the center? Um, when we have a state uh, disaster response uh, force, force um, after the 2013 uh, cloud floods. Okay. Now, have you heard of the smart city concept? Yes. Can you give me the ingredients and how many cities are going to be considered as smart cities? Um, and the ingredients of smart city are. Uh, it firstly it uses information and communication and technology to make cities uh, more, more inhabitable and that includes uh, better waste management, mm -hmm. uh, better buildings. Just basic amenities. Basic amenities. Yeah. So then tell me now. Uh, and waste management. management and then transport. Transport. Safety. Safety. Uh, and then the Urban local bodies would be uh, would work in a special purpose vehicle along with private players uh, in order to leverage land. As so, also. how many smart cities have been decided on? Ma'am, ma as far as I can recall, 100 plus. Uh, to start with. Okay, now, uh, akin to the smart city concept is also the Amru. Are you aware? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Tell me something about the Amru. Um, ma'am, can I just take a minute? Yes. Atal vision for rejuvenation of urban transport. Uh, is tell me about this, ma'am. It replaces Chandram uh, uh, yes. as yes, ma'am. And ma'am, the difference is that now uh, the approach taken is more. Uh, it gives more autonomy to the urban bodies, 
um, earlier they would get appraisal of the scheme by the center and only then funds would be released. Now, now the funds, they would just look at the plan and release uh, funds unconditionally. And the last question, you heard of NITI IU. Yes, ma'am. Briefly describe what the NITI IU is, what is its purpose, and what is it? Uh, ma'am, the NITI IU is a think tank mm -hmm. uh, that has that caters to uh, planning in a mixed market economy like India. Ma'am, because uh, planning doesn't have to be centralized and imperative anymore, they uh, function as a guiding. Uh, so added as a guidance to planning, it uh, also provides Who members. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Mr. Amitabh Khan. Members, all members. All the chief, chief ministers, chief minister of yes. the United States and the Yes, And the people who hold the patches, please. Yes, Particulars of prizes, medals, schools, scholarships, etc. You have mentioned publication on credit ratings in emerging markets. Yes. Yes. So, some light on that? What did they do? Okay. Uh, so, uh, in, the, in the research, so I looked at uh, mm -hmm. specifically BRICS BRIC nations. Mm -hmm. And so, the sovereign rating assigned to these countries, what is it based on? So, according to standard and poor. You made an analysis of that? Or? So, I did a, so, I did a quantitative analysis okay. uh, of, so they said that quantitative factors taken in were fiscal health, mm -hmm. growth rate, inflation, deficits. But so apart from that, they said that... And what kind of conclusions do you, do you draw out of that? So, uh, that these uh, rating agencies also give themselves a little leeway in terms of qualitative factors. And so, so okay. there is no uniformity. For instance, uh, between India and Russia, the, there weren't as many reasons to have a difference in rating. And where would you place India on the credit ratings? Yeah. We are figuring high yeah. in the list. So we are the last investment grades at triple B minus. So I would, uh, so without bias, I would pay, place it above triple B minus because sir, India has a history of never defaulting on its debt. Okay. Uh, Extracurricular activities we have mentioned, latest developments in economics. Yes. Any specific development that uh, we have been monitoring? Uh, so, recently on a global level, so I have been reading a lot about deglobalization mm -hmm. and fallout of, de of globalization, how we are moving, to, countries are moving towards a more inward looking world. Protectionism? Yes, so protectionism. Okay. protectionism. Tell us briefly on that. So. What is the trend that you are going to notice? Uh, so starting from the United States... Some, the, si some signals that you get. So United States withdrew from TPP. Okay. And so the president claims that they would want to withdraw from World, world Trade Organization mm -hmm. if they could. And so Britain, uh, Brexit is a sign of them moving away from the European Union. Okay. Now, Indian Rupi has been appreciating uh, of late. And I think yesterday or day before, this was the highest level in 17 months. Yes, what is the significance of that on the economy? Uh, so I am appreciating that Etsy would adversely affect our exports. Mm -hmm. And so imports would also become more expensive. But so it would uh, give a positive signal because uh, uh, to FDI, so we could have more foreign investment coming in. And so it, even though it might act as a positive signal, it would be a challenge for the export industry. So. How much of farm exchange reserves we have at present? Uh, so, so around 335 billion dollars. More than that. More than 360. Yeah. Yeah. At least, some of what we have any impact on the FT, on the forex reserves that we have? Yes, sir. Uh, it will happen. It will happen, sir. Uh, are we convertible on the capital account? No, so we do not have complete, uh, we have partial capital account convertible. So no, we are not even partial. So we are convertible on the current account, we are not on the capital account. Yes, Why we are having uh, so, so previously, so committees like uh, committees mm -hmm. like Tower Board Committee have right. been set mm -hmm. up. So we feel that it would expose us to greater volatility globally. And so learning from the Asian crisis in the late 90s when they opened up their capital market, 
So the currency fluctuation. Uh, but that's an ongoing process, you know. Yes, so the legitimate that perpetuity we don't take a decision on that. Uh, so we the have vulnerability will be there always, yes. right? Mm-hmm. So we have been relaxing. So for instance, uh, external commercial borrowings are more. We have a liberalized remittance scheme uh, in capital account. So so slowly we have. Okay, uh, one last question. You heard of John Maynard Keynes? You studied economics. Yes, yes. Is Keynes relevant today in India in the Indian context? Keynesianism. So the prime Keynesian tenet of low aggregate demand during the recession, and so. Uh, Public investment. Yes, investment. So, so in the fiscal policy sense, it is very relevant to India because the government constantly uses and will be required to use uh, fiscal policy to move the country towards full employment. Uh, An eminent economist who died recently, global, the global so very eminent economist. So Nobel laureate, uh, sir, and also. Right. Thank you. Right. So we close your interview. Let's see how you perform. Give you a feedback. Why civil service? Uh, you, you said the quality of life, you want to improve the quality of life. My suggestion is don't make these statements. Just say that these are the highest services in the country. So it will be a personal achievement. It will give me a sense of achievement if I can make it to any service. At the same time, they will, this will provide me a unique platform for public service. Which no other service in the country can provide. Mm-hmm. Don't go into those that I want to. Some people say I want to transform society. Or you want a great career? You yes. offer a great career. And you want uh, an opportunity for public service. The best opportunity is available here. So keep it simple. Eh? Then check up on this uh, health uh, indices. So this is a burning topic now with the national health policy being announced, national health survey and latest is the HDI index which came yesterday. Who is number one in this index? So HDI no. index? No. no. Scandinavian countries generally score the best. Now budget, I ask you only one question about Mr. Jetty. Some you could give, but other replies were inadequate. So take a second look at budget. Have you got a copy of it? Yes. Not the whole thing, but just highlights of the budget. Yes. If you read it again and again, when is your interview? It's 29. You still have time. Download it today. Yes. Read it every day like a Bible and like a prayer book. Okay. So you will get a lot of data. You will be able to handle a number of questions. You know there are three schemes. Ujjwala, Ujjala and Ujjwala. Yes. You know yes. all that? Yes, yes. Uh-huh. I know the three. So someone can ask you, distinguish and tell what is it. Yes. Then they can also ask how is Ujjwala doing? Yes. Ujjwala is a Udaya thing, you know? Yes. Udaya. Yes. Udaya, you know that? Yes. Uh-huh. What is Udaya? Yes. So Ujjwala, Discom, Ashwala. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Women empowerment, you got stuck at legislation part. Yes. Now they have so much legislation. You know, anti dowdy anti dowdy laws, 498A, IBC. Yes. Right? Yes. Just check out. Yes. Uh, domestic Violence Act. Yes. Go to internet and say legislation empowering women. Yes. They'll give you 7 8. Keep it ready. Yes. Smart city, you know how much money has been allocated, total money government will give for smart cities. Total over 5 years. You know, it's a five-year scheme. Yes, sir. Five hundred crores each. Cabinet has already sanctioned forty-eight thousand crores to be allocated over five years. What is the allocation this year? No idea. I think four thousand five hundred crores. Niti Aayog and other important step. This year, how it is costing cooperative? Right. Disaster management. Is also for NRDF. Then we come to rupee strengthening. You know? uh, it helps uh, uh, our imports, uh, but uh, it uh, it uh, reduces the income of the exporters. 
But in the long run, what is better? Should it become weak or should it become strong? Yeah, you, you check out. I think a strong rupee will be comparatively better than a weak rupee. FDI Then forex reserves, more than 360 billion dollars. You know what are macroeconomic indicators, etc. Yes, sir. On that basis, how do you rate the India's economy? Is it poor, doing poorly, badly, nicely? So it's the fastest growing large economy. So, Mr. Rajan says that that doesn't take us in. Don't give those general statements. IMF says this. Standalone economy, how does it do? You can say it is a step by step. Now, indications are that it is improving. For instance, uh, agriculture has registered a 6% growth in the first one, which is remarkable. Then uh, exports have registered from the 17% in February. There is a continuous rise for the last six months. And uh, manufacturing has, after a decline in November, after in December, it has again gone up to 2.7 in January. But this information will come only if you are reading the video. Okay, economics will be pushed away from the hobbies, etc. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.